Hi there, I'm Ben, and welcome to part two of my full platinum walkthrough for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. As always with my guides, we are picking up exactly where we left off at the end of the previous video. So we're at the dilapidated temple, and we are going to move into the next area, the first proper area, which is Ashina Outskirts. I'm going to take things a little bit slower here at the start and explain kind of the finer details with certain things that are going on, because I know there's a lot going on and it's quite confusing. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. So we do have a grappling hook, that is L2. Uh, I'm just going to move back and forth here. So when it's green, then that means the, the grappling hook was, is in range. And that counts for when you're falling or jumping as well as you move towards it. So just keep pressing L2 if you think you're going to miss it. Uh, there, do, do a double jump, do a jump, jump, and then hold square to grab onto the ledge. Uh, that's going to be something you'll be using throughout the game. So this is Ashina Outskirts. Again, just pull yourself over here, and this is our second uh, Sculptor's Idol. So we're just going to rest at this, that opens it up. And now we can travel between any Sculptor's Idols that we have opened up. We only have two, we have the Dilapidated Temple and the Ashna Outskirts one. But you can freely just move between them, there's no cost for doing it, which is great. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to die and show you how that works. So here's some uh, Ungo's sugar. There's lots of sugars in this game. And this is... Basically, we won't be using the sugars until very specific boss fights. Uh, they do help with all of them. But they help reduce damage uh, being taken and damage output. Or, or increase damage output. It helps you just kind of get through some of the more difficult bosses. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to let this guy kill me. So I'm just going to casually... You can kind of figure out what's going on with the... Uh, the blocking and the damage and things like that. So when you die in this game, you have a second win. And the first time you do this, uh, you may have already done this at this point, uh, you can get the trophy resurrection. So you can either resurrect or die. So R1 to resurrect or L1 to die. Uh, so we're going to resurrect and enemies do think you're dead. So you can use that to your advantage sometimes and sneak on them, sneak up on them. Uh, so you'll get the trophy resurrection the first time you do this. Uh, you have two resurrection dots in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, you can see there's a black slash through. It's going to throw quite a few tutorials here at the beginning. I've left them on to, so I can kind of I can remember what what to tell you as we go. Um, you can see there's a black slash, so I can't resurrect again until I rest at an idol or uh, defeat a, a boss with a death blow. Uh, so what I just did then was hold square and collect the currency, the Sen, from the enemy I'd killed. Uh, you're going to want to get used to that. Every time you kill an enemy, just hold square, and it just comes towards you automatically, and it does it in groups as well. You can group it all together. So just get used to doing that. Sen is the main currency, obviously, of the game. I'm just trying to look for this guy here. This is not very well done. <laughs> nearly died again. That would have been quite fun. Um, let's say I wanted to nearly die, um, and then I thought, no, best not. Uh, to show you what happens when you actually die. What happens when you actually die is that you lose lose half of your Sen and half of your um, XP towards your next level. Uh, I will go through that shortly later on with regards to uh, Unseen Aid as well at the top. I'll explain about that, how that works, and Dragon Rot as well. I'll do that shortly. So I'm just going to sit back there, and you can see I've refreshed my... Uh, my uh, resurrection in the bottom left hand corner that purple circle and as you kill more enemies you'll get another circle uh, and then you have two potentially so I'm just going to kill this one uh, there is an item I'm going to drop off to the right hand side here shortly uh, but I do get a bit turned around you got to drop off the left hand side for one and off the right hand side for one uh, but I'll do that shortly I'm just going to clear up first so I'm going to jump up here. There's two guys up here. Uh, ceramic shards you just saw me pick up are basically distractions. Uh, I do put all the items in the top corner just so you can be aware of what I'm picking up. Unless they're random drops as well. Obviously I can't say that you're going to get those. So uh, drop on him. Remember to lock on to get that drop on. And then cut through the next one. And then turn around and through this gate you may get a dog run towards you. You can... Uh, block dogs, you can also uh, deflect them like that and get a straight kill with them. They are easily killed in this game. One or two hits will kill a dog. You do not actually see me properly. If they don't have a hat on, enemies, the little ones like this, you can generally just swing your sword at them and uh, and kill them quite quickly. If they do have a hat on, they're a bit tougher uh, and you'll want to get ready for, for guarding. This one here, Ungo Sugar again. Um, 
reduces damage taken for when uh, a, a limited amount of time. So we'll be saving sugars until we need them. Now I'm just backtracking uh, to where we could have gone because we went up on the high high path. You always want to be doing that, obviously, uh, because then um, you get the drop on the enemies. So there's two guys there. There's one here. He doesn't have a helmet, I think. I just stand there. <laughs> like, where was the block? I guess I must have been reading notes or just glancing off screen for a moment. Don't do that. Some pellets here. So just for reference, this is where we are. The idol is up there. Uh, we could have just dropped straight down and, uh, and gone this way, but it was easier to do it the other way. Ceramic shard here. I'll, I'll literally never use that. You could probably just sell it if you get the chance. Uh, we will be getting merchants in this uh, shortly. So I'm looking off the left-hand side here. Because uh, there's I know there's two drops. Don't worry, I'll, I'll figure it out in a moment. <laughs> one to the left, one to the right. I know I did say it's all uh, researched. And it, it is, trust me. <laughs> it just got turned around for a moment. Yeah, it's further up. The one on the left is right at the top, and the one on the right is where I said before. Fistful of Ash, that's a distraction tactic. Uh, again, I don't use those. I can't, I don't, yeah. It's not something I would uh, would ever use. So down there, there's a bunch more dogs. So don't go through the gate. There's a big chicken round here. Uh, they're not particularly dangerous. They're just a little bit annoying, really. They spot you and alert everybody else. That's kind of what they do, I suppose. They don't really do much else. Uh, so I was going to drop through the roof here and continue with the boss, but we'll actually just run back and get the sculptor's idol. There's dogs around here. So if you need to, rest. Uh, just be aware that once one you once you rest, enemies will come back to life. Um, unless they're mini-bosses or one-off enemies. But apart from that, all enemies will. Uh, so if you don't need to uh, increase your... Or get your gourd usage back then uh, don't rest for now one dog there and one there it's extremely satisfying to uh, deflect dogs attacks I must say some more useless ceramic shards uh, so yeah this is where we drop off it's down there there we are so that's where we're gonna be going shortly but we're gonna just do this uh, this fight first Yep, that's where the uh, everything's clear. I was just checking there wasn't a last dog there. I'm sure there was another one, but I guess not. So this is the first of ten prosthetic tools. This is the shuriken wheel. Uh, we'll fit this later on once we've just dealt with this little mini boss fight that's coming up. Uh, we need to go back to the sculptor to do that. Uh, so, yep, yeah, there you go, it tells us. The shuriken's not necessary for this fight. And here's where I remembered. <laughs> I like, ah, yes, I remember now. It's off to the uh, to the right hand side here. That's right. So if you drop down here, you can see if you look to the. There we go. There we go. Bit of a better angle here. You can just drop down carefully and uh, grab Echo Sugar, which increases your power, uh, your attack power for a limited time. Uh, in this game, there's no. Uh, death if you fall you just respawn back where you fell but you will take some damage which is also a very good thing because uh, this this game is very vertical uh, there's lots of jumping around and ledges and things so if it's like dark souls or something where you died instantly it would get extremely annoying but then you know how annoying that is if you've played dark souls uh, there is a mini boss down there do not alert him we're going to get one of the death blows done with stealth so that's where we need to. We actually need to jump off there afterwards uh, to get the other thing. We'll do that afterwards, though. We're just going to do this uh, boss fight. This isn't one of the boss fights needed for the trophy. This is a mini boss fight, uh, but we do need this for the prayer bead and the gourd seed. So f you can see above him his health bar. There he has two death blow counters. So you need to death blow him twice. That sounds kind of weird saying that. <laughs> um, so you can get a stealth one, lock onto him, jump, and uh, get one free one there. And then he is fairly slow. His, his attacks are a bit delayed. Uh, and he does have a perilous attack, which you'll have to jump over. This one here. So when he does that, just jump. I actually hit him before he, he started the uh, attack off. 
Uh, and we're just waiting for him to do certain things here. Because I can finish him at this point. But I want him to do the charge, which is there. If an enemy starts doing that, they're doing it. There, he's doing it again. Uh, a charge. And what if that charge, if he manages to pull that off, he'll reduce his posture bar. Uh, the, the orange bar at the top, meaning you'll have to do more damage to him to uh, defeat him. Uh, once you do defeat him, you will get a Gourd Seed and a Prayer Bead. We can't use the Prayer Bead yet, but we can use the Gourd Seed. And that's what we're going to go and do. Some more Ash there. So we'll just run back through, go back to this Sculptor. Go back to the Sculptor by trying to jump up here when I could just... No, it's not come up. There we go. <laughs> uh, we're going to go back to the, the back to the dilapidated temple. That's apparently very difficult to say. Uh, so yeah, we need four prayer beads, and that will increase our vitality, meaning we can basically our health bar goes up, and that's the only way we can increase our damage. And our health is through prayer beads, and after defeating a main boss, uh, that's the only that's the only things you need to worry about with regards to leveling yourself up uh, that way. Right, uh, we'll go and speak to Emma. She will have lots to say. Uh, eventually, you'll be able to give her the gourd seed. Do that, and you'll get another usage of the gourd flask. Esther's flask, whatever you want to call it. So we now have two uses. And then once we've done that, we'll go and see the sculptor. And he's going to fit our first prosthetic. Uh, he'll have lots to say about certain things as well. Shinobi tool. So yeah, there we go. It's a little different. It all mean the same thing. And this is the loaded shuriken, which is pretty useful for uh, killing certain enemies from a distance, dogs and things like that. You can kill from a distance now, and um, distracting certain enemies while they're doing certain attacks. It will come in handy, especially for the second main boss. So it's quite a useful one. Some of them I don't really use the tools, but uh, it is one of the ten we need. Uh, so you can have three loaded and ready. So once you go and see the uh, the sculptor and have them added, then you can just put them in your inventory there. Uh, and this is spirit emblems. This is what I mentioned in the first video. Uh, we're, we're using these now that we have a prosthetic tool. We just picked five up there. You see in the bottom right hand corner, we have five of them. Press R2 to use your prosthetic. So that I just threw a shuriken and it costs one spirit emblem. Now spirit emblems you get from enemies. You just randomly pick them up. They'll just float towards you. You won't even notice it half the time. Or you can buy them here at, the, at a, uh, uh, an idol. You can stack them as well. You'll go over 15 and you'll just keep adding them to your inventory here. Uh, and you'll just pick them up as you, when you go to idols automatically. Right, unseen aid in the top right hand corner is when you die, there's a 30% chance that you will not lose half of your Sen and your XP towards your next level. Um, the more you die, the, the, the more this number goes down. There's something called uh, Dragon Rot in this game. Certain characters can get Dragon Rot, and if they get it, it basically reduces your Unseen Aid. Uh, you can cure Dragon Rot, but apart, apart from that, there's nothing to worry about with regards to Dragon Rot. It may sound really bad, and the game does make it sound quite bad, but it's not that bad. It just reduces your Unseen Aid percentage, which can go as low as 2. Uh, so the more you die, the, the more that number goes down. But you can cure it, and I'll tell you how to do that later on. Right. This area is a little bit dangerous, uh, so do stealth first. I'm going round here, so we're basically just carrying on after that mini boss now. Uh, I'm letting this guy walk up the stairs here. He's going to speak to this one up here. There is no reason for us to do this apart from you may just want to listen to it. If you, this is the first time you're playing the game, uh, I'll be showing you little bits like this uh, so you can get backstory and things like that. Tips. So, yeah, this is an eavesdrop section now you may just feel like right i'm going to just go and drop off and kill these two do not do that there's a guy with a rifle over in that broken building over there that destroyed destroyed building uh, we're going to go and get rid of him first so stealth again massive part of this game so just be careful jumping around on roofs they can see you on rooftops but they have to be in line of sight you're not invisible on rooftops so i'm just going to wait here for him to walk past 
and I'm just going to kill the rifle guy. If all hell breaks loose in this area, uh, there is a, a big guy with a mallet off directly ahead of me now. Do not run down into that corner uh, where that tree is. Just stay back or try and hide in the long grass. You can actually just run away from situations, mini bosses included. Um, so don't feel like you have to commit once you get seen. You can just run away and let them uh, lose where you are like I'm doing with this guy here. So I've killed that rifle guy. There was an item behind him. I'll pick everything up once we've cleared this area. There's quite a few people around here. Got lucky here in that he, he didn't see that. So we'll stay low. I'm about to get seen. I did get seen, I think, there. So there's going to be three... Yeah, it's a good place to fight up here because it means the big guy with the mallet won't see you. Pretty standard enemies, really. Nope. They didn't see me, just that one. So if you lock on here, stand over here and lock on, you can just make him out, he's behind this tree. Jump off, do a death blow, and you'll kill him instantly. Otherwise it's a bit of a pain. Uh, don't worry about when you jump towards a ledge, if you do actually perform a death blow, you won't fall off. It will just sort of catch you and you'll do a little animation. You won't, uh, you won't fall off. Another two here. And there are two more. Uh, I do get spotted, but it's not a problem. There's one here. There's actually a rifle guy that sees me. I completely forget about. Uh, the Mibu Balloon of Wealth um, basically increases the amount of send you get from enemies for a while. It's one of those things you think, oh, I'll save that for a, a good time, and you just never use it. <laughs> There's quite a few items like that in this game. So, yeah, the one more, just the rifle guy here. And that's this area clear. And now we'll uh, we'll go and grab everything. There's quite a lot to see here. So ceramic shards, yeah, no, don't need those. But we'll get them anyway. I'm trying to get up onto the rooftop here. If you go onto the other corner, this corner, there's a, a an anchor point. But apparently, I anchored over here. <laughs> I wasn't even looking there. But there's a, a light coin purse, which is 100 sen, which gets. It's basically hard currency in that you can't lose it when you die. Now there's going to be a little uh, trick we use with that as well. I'll show you once we get to the first merchant what that is. So jump over here and speak to this old woman and eventually she will give you the young lord's bell charm. Say that you are, uh, you're you not her son and then carry on with the conversation and she'll give you the charm. We're going to be using this at the beginning of the next video to move to a new area. So just grab that for now. Don't need to speak to her anymore. And her son is actually over here. Uh, do watch out for that enemy there. He he might see you. He did in my practice for some reason. He just randomly saw me while I was speaking to this guy. You don't have to speak to him, but if you want the whole kind of little story that's going on, speak to him and uh, tell him that you are there, basically. Say yes. And then he'll go through this whole thing. I'm going to skip it. But basically, that's uh, that poor woman's son. She doesn't even realise he's, what, I don't know, 20 feet away from her. Down here, there's two chickens. You'll be able to get one of them. They are a bit of a pain if they hit you. Yeah, they do hurt because they knock you over. How did it hit me then? I have no idea. But what we want is in here, break this, and there are three light coin purses. So that's 300 sen. And we're going to be using that shortly. You should have about... 100, 150 uh, send, depending on how much you've died. Don't worry, you should have enough in your inventory to uh, to buy what we're about to buy. Don't follow him. Don't be tempted to go and kill him. It's a trap. Don't do it. Just jump up here. All the way up to the top. And this is one of the memorial mobs, basically the merchants of the game. So you'll get a trophy for speaking to the first one. Uh, I was going to show you how to use the send, but you can actually just uh, sell it to him, which is easier. So speak to him, and you get the trophy memorial mob, and you can purchase and sell items from these guys. Now, what you can do is you can actually buy light coin purses. So if you think you're going to die, or you just got a bunch of sen, you can come to one of these and buy these light coin purchases. There's a 10% tax for it, because they cost 110, you can only sell it for 100, so there's a bit of a tax to it. But it means if you die, you don't lose your sen, so always be aware of that. Uh, what I'm doing here is selling three I've got 230, so uh, I go up to 530. We need 500 sen to purchase these Robert's firecrackers. You should have 500 
hard sent in five purses. Uh, so you should be able to buy that as well at this point. Plus whatever you've got on you. Uh, that's our, basically our second Shinobi tool. And a very, very, very useful one. Probably the most useful, maybe. Uh, so yes, we will want that. So yeah, get used to where the merchants are. Uh, and if you think, you know, I'm going to this area, it looks a bit dangerous. Uh, I've got a bunch of Sen. Um, I don't want to lose it or lose half of it. Go to a merchant, and if you can, buy some more light purses. There are going to be uh, bigger purses that we can use eventually. So uh, yes, we'll do that. So the reason I'm resting here, I did have a quick look around. I've just skipped a little bit there, just to make sure I knew where I was going. Is because we need to do a drop. You're going to need full-ish health. We need at least half health because we need to drop down to that ledge there. Don't worry, it's not going to kill you unless you've got no health, in which case it will. But jump off and land here and there's going to be an extremely rare item in here and this is a bundled Jizo statue. Now this is definitely one of those items you'll say, I'll save that for a very special occasion and never use. What it does is it restores a, uh, a resurrection point during a boss fight, or any point. Uh, so there's some Gaichin's sugar that allows you to come a little harder to, to detect. We'll use that in certain areas as well, so don't just use it yet. So yeah, the, these statues, you've, we've got two nodes in the bottom left there. Say I was doing a boss fight. I died once, I use one of my resurrections, that means I can't use another one until I've done a death blow. I can use the statue and it will give me access to that second one. So what I'm doing here, I'm just showing you the difference between uh, hooks, uh, circles there. If it has the little triangle in the middle, it means that you're just going to get thrown a certain distance. Uh, and then I'm coming around here to kill this guy because he's got a cannon and he's really annoying. That was that trap I was mentioning earlier. He's going to drop black gunpowder and antidote powder. Black gunpowder is for upgrading and antidote powder is for removing the poison status effect. So you can see there is a difference there in the grapple point. If it has a little triangle, you're just going to get propelled forward. And then if it's just the circle, you get pulled towards and stay there. Now this little bit here isn't... Uh, essential, but I'm just going to come around and we're going to kill these few guys just to get a little bit more sen, I suppose, and uh, show you what you're missing, which wasn't much. That was quite bad. So that was this was the trap basically. You walk in here, you've got these four guys, and the guy up at the top with a cannon raining fire upon you, and it's it's yeah, you're going to die pretty quickly. So that's why we've gone round and done that other bit there because they all connect together. And uh, means we don't have to worry about him. So it does tell you to run. We're going to go over there as well. The game does tell you to run, but obviously you can just skirt around the edge and ignore him uh, so he doesn't see you at all. So jump down here. Don't worry, you will be okay, because that is going to become green and you can just pull yourself towards it. And back down. And there's going to be two Mibu Possession Balloons. Uh, again, this helps with uh, when you're farming and things like that. I'm going to jump over here and get some scrap iron, another upgrade material. We need lots and lots of this stuff, so you can buy it later in the game. That is a huge snake skin. Uh, spoiler alert, there's a huge snake somewhere. <laughs> and then we're just going to make our way back. Nearly finished on this video. We're going to be not going any further than where we are now in Ashna outskirts. We're actually going to make a little detour to another area using that bell we just got from the old woman. And then come back here. Afterwards, we're just going to make our way to another idol, though. So these are stairs. The next mini boss is up at the top of the stairs, so do not go up the stairs yet. We're just going to climb up. And there's your next idol. You're going to get very familiar with this idol, because... <laughs> This is where we will be doing a lot of farming later on. A lot later on. The area will look different, but uh, yeah, you'll, you'll know where we are. Oh god, the farming. It shouldn't be uh, too bad. We'll break it up slightly. I'll give you the option to break it up. So just come back here. This is where the guy is on top of the wall with the cannon. There's a couple of pellets there I forgot to grab. But now we're going to uh, 
just drop down here and just interact with this for a bit more backstory, the remnant. So I'll touch that and listen listen along. It doesn't really make sense. And then there's another merchant over here, but he's not a merchant just yet. So what you want to do is speak to him and you're going to need 30 sen, I think it is, and we're going to pay him for information and eventually once he's run out of information, so at first say that night, I'm just going to skip ahead now, and then when he asks you then pay him 10 sen for some information, he's going to go on with himself for quite a while, and then eventually he'll run out of words to say, and you'll be able to purchase some more for another 20. If you don't have it, just go and kill a few enemies. I mean, 30 cents is not hard to get hold of. And eventually you'll get the Flame Barrel memo, which is not very helpful because I'm going to show you where the Flame Barrel is anyway. But it tells you where a certain prosthetic is. And then he will say that he will become a merchant now with the money that you've given him. He will. Uh, so once he's repeating himself here like this, I'll procure some goods with the coin you gave me. Uh, when we come back here later on, he'll he'll be a merchant which is good and now we're just going to leave we're going to go back to the dilapidated temple I really don't like saying that apparently because I can't for some reason so you can just use important places it will always be there we'll run in speak to him and he's going to we'll get those firecrackers we purchased earlier we're going to make our next tool so he's going to have lots to say and he's going to give you the shinobi esoteric text which I'll go through shortly basically it's the first page of upgrades you can use with your leveling which I'll show you but what we're here for right now there we go skills so as we level get skill points can put them into skills some of them are all very very good some of them are a bit meh but we need them all that's the problem So present this prosthetic again and get the shinobi firecracker. So we now have two. So you can have them both and then switch between them using triangle. Firecracker is very handy against beasts mainly and just enemies. It just distracts them. So we'll come and uh, sit here. So you can acquire skills if you go down here. So we do have one skill point, so you can purchase this, but do not. We want the one below it, the Makiri counter. It's extremely good, and we want it because it's very, very powerful against bosses. It allows us to uh, counter uncounterable attacks, basically. Uh, it's very good. So don't buy it yet. We'll come back to all that later on. Uh, and I will put the uh, firecrackers in our inventory at the beginning of the next video. I know I just said I was going to do it, but I didn't. And uh, yeah, that's it for this one. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.